During the early 1950s, the major towns across the UK were consumed with thick coal smogs. The Great Smog of 1952 was believed to have killed 4,000 people in London alone. With that many deaths, the problem could not be ignored. There were protests, the politicians acted, and the Clean Air Act was introduced. Unfortunately, the problem has not gone away. It's just become invisible. I'm supporting the Healthy Air campaign on, on lots of different levels. I'm a mother, and uh, a mother of a two-year-old lively child who loves running around outside. But in central London, you're never too far away from a road, even if you're in a park. We're here from the Healthy Air campaign to measure air pollution. Pollution levels are too high, too dangerously high on some days of the year. You can almost see the smog in the air, but actually a lot of it is invisible and I didn't realise that and didn't realise how tiny these particles are and how you can ingest them, they really penetrate right into your lungs and it's more later on in life where it will have a knock-on effect. Clearly parents should be concerned about uh, to what extent their children are exposed to, uh, to traffic and, uh, and air pollution. Studies in the States have shown long-term effects on the development of children's lungs, so that children living near main roads enter adulthood with damaged lungs in that they haven't reached their full lung capacity. A lower lung capacity is an important predictor of death in later life. Here in the UK, we face an invisible health crisis, which is causing the premature death of thousands of people every year. It's called air pollution. It's gone up to 99,236. Adults that were exposed to air pollution were more likely to die from uh, heart attacks and strokes. The highest reading we've seen so far. What do you think that means? It means that there's a lot of air pollution. And for someone like my little precious daughter who has Ow. asthma like symptoms, I don't want her exposed to that on a, on a daily basis. DEFRA, the government department responsible for tackling air pollution, still has no coherent plan at all with which to address it. The government is facing legal action for its failure to meet EU air quality targets. I've read the air pollution reports over the last year and I've been educated. I think everyone else needs to be. People need to be aware of what we're being exposed to, not only in central London, but over 250 places across the UK. need to take responsibility for a start. The government needs to act like it did in the 1950s and we really need to tackle this problem in, in lots of different ways. That's why we need urgent political action. Action to reduce traffic in urban areas. Action which would mean local authorities are properly resourced to deal with the air pollution problem. Over the coming years we need to see improvements uh, in the traffic that we have and in reductions in the uh, traffic that we have on the streets in cities, perhaps a, a significant switch towards electric powered vehicles. That's why I support the Healthy Air campaign and that's why I'm calling on the coalition government to uphold our right to breathe clean air. With your help and support, we can solve this problem like we did in the 1950s. For the Healthy Air campaign, we want cleaner, healthier air.